Today we're going to discuss the differences between the Swiss Travel Pass and the Euro Pass. If you're doing a trip through Europe, you might be considering both of these passes and wondering which is the right one for you. But today we're going to dive deep into both passes, do a comparison, see what's similar, what's different, what the benefits are for you and why you should choose one over the other. So first off, let's look at what's similar between these two passes. When you're focusing in on Switzerland, basically they both cover the whole train system, but the Euro Pass doesn't cover the more local transport and only covers a few select lakes when it comes to boat trips, like the two lakes on either side of Interlaken, Brienz and Thun. They're covered and there's a few little trips like on the Zugersee, which is around Zug, and one in Lake Constance, but in general boat trips are not covered and local transport so trams are not covered but you can use the trains in the cities to get around. So what's the main difference between the two? Well of course the Euro Pass covers Europe so if you're traveling from Paris through Switzerland to Milan it's definitely worth considering. You need to add up what all these legs cost to see whether it's really worth it but the Euro Pass is one that's really worth it when you're doing a lot of trips around Europe and predominantly using the trains in Switzerland to get around big cities and maybe doing some mountain trips, but not too many. Because the Euro Pass only gives you 25% off on the mountain trips, whereas the Swiss Travel Pass, which is focused on Switzerland, of course, gives you 50% off in the majority of cases. A few of them around Lake Lucerne are even free. Yay! And so that's where you say big with the Swiss Travel Pass. It also includes 500 museums for free, which is amazing. So if you're a museum lover and you want to see a lot of the Swiss museums, then that might tip it over the edge when you're deciding between the Swiss Travel Pass and the Eurail Pass. Another thing you need to consider with the Eurail Pass is some of the trains you need to do seat reservations on, the more popular legs. So you need to look online on the Eurail Pass and see where you need to do seat reservations because it's not always the case that you can just jump on the train Whereas with the Swiss Travel Pass in Switzerland, you just get on the train and go, or the bus, or the tram, or the boat. So it's really amazingly flexible and easy. You just wake up in the morning with a valid Swiss Travel Pass and go wherever you want. Of course, in both cases, if you're gonna do some of the really big panoramic rides in Switzerland, like the Glacier Express, or the Golden Pass route, or the Benina Express, then you need to reserve a train if you want those really amazing carriages with the full panoramic windows. If you're just catching a local train on the same route, which you can do and we locals do all the time, then you don't need to make a seat reservation. But on the special panoramic trains, you do. Whether you've got the Swiss Travel Pass or the Euro Pass, you always need a seat reservation on those trains. Another really cool thing about the Euro Pass is the flexibility of the passes. When it comes to the flex passes, so specific number of days in a month where you can turn them on and off, so you can travel today, not tomorrow, next week, that's the flex passes. They both have very similar flex passes. But when it comes to continuous passes, the Swiss Travel Pass only has three, four, six, eight, and 15. Whereas the Euro Pass has a lot longer passes, up to three months. And that's where it's really handy if you're doing huge trips across Europe for multiple months or even a month, then the Euro Pass is something to consider. It can be a little bit cheaper as well. You need to compare the passes, but you also need to know what's not included. And that's why you need to seriously think, am I spending a lot of time in Switzerland or am I just passing through and doing a few mountain trips then the Eurail Pass is a better option for you. Whereas if you're spending a lot of time in Switzerland and doing a lot of mountain travel and a lot of museums, then of course the Swiss Travel Pass is the way to go. It can save you tons of money. Of course, you might also want to consider the half fare card. And I've got a video up here all about that for you to check out as well, which can save you tons of money on travel in Switzerland. And it could supplement your Euro Pass and cover the things that are costing you tons of money. So think about that as well. And of course, if you're still confused about which pass to pick, have a look at my travel pass selection option down below. There's a link where I can help you find the right travel pass and get through all of this confusion because it's not simple. I understand that there's so many details and it's so complicated. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Swiss travel videos, be sure to subscribe down below. See you in the next one.